Thank you. Uh, well, thanks everyone for being here and thank you for this great opportunity to present my work, the structural uh, characterization of plant respiratory complexes. So plants are the foundation for human society and in fact, most life on earth. So through, if you think about it, they provide us with the oxygen that we breathe, the, they are the basis for the uh, for all the terrestrial food chains, including uh, all the, the food chains that Marine just talked about. Um, and plants also provide us with different uh, materials, uh, fuels, housing, for fuels, housing, clothing, and other essentials for us to survive and for society to thrive. But in order for plants to survive, they must carry out two essential metabolic processes, uh, photosynthesis in the chloroplast and respiration in the mitochondria. And these two metabolic processes provides a plant, provide the plants with the energy and the metabolic inter intermediates they need to live and grow. And in fact, the balance between the carbon that is gained through photosynthesis and the carbon that is lost through mitochondria, through respiration, uh, directly impacts the rate at which the plant can grow and the amount of carbon dioxide that the plant can capture or release. And so our understanding um, of these two essential metabolic processes has global implications in, ter in terms of crop efficiency and atmospheric composition. And our understanding also determines our ability to, um, to engineer and implement new, uh, new strategies to combat uh, climate change and to improve our ability to feed the growing population. However, although we understand the, the proteins that carry out photosynthesis in great biochemical detail, our knowledge of the proteins that carry out respiration in plants has lagged much behind. And this is mostly to do, to do with strong technical challenges in obtaining sufficient amounts of plant mitochondria for biochemical and structural work. So this gap is represented here on this slide where you just see, uh, which is in a cartoon form. So we do know that in plants, as well as in all other eukaryotic organisms, respiration occurs through the mitochondria electron transport chain represented here. This chain is composed of four large uh, membrane protein complexes, complex one, two, three, and four, composed of multiple protein subunits. And we also know that these complexes can exist individually or they can come together into higher order assemblies called super complexes. However, at the beginning of my postdoc, um, this was pretty much all we knew about these plant respiratory complexes and they remained in this cartoon representation or low resolution representations. But if we want to fully understand plant respiration to be able to, for example, manipulate plant metabolism to produce better crops, then we really need to be able to biochemically and structurally characterize plant respiratory complexes. So this was the goal of my postdoc to overcome the challenges uh, related to studying mitochondrial respiration uh, in plants uh, to be able to characterize these proteins. So in order to do this, um, we developed a new or a non-traditional approach of using a partial biochemical purification followed by in silico purification of the complexes. So we start with mung beans, which is our model organism, and we first isolate the mitochondria from them. And then we, uh, we extract the membrane, uh, the membrane complexes with gentle detergents and proceed through an initial partial purification using a sucrose gradient. Now, traditionally in structural biology, you would follow uh, this initial partial purification with a full biochemical purification, usually using chromatography, to purify each of the complexes of interest and then use each of the pure samples to proceed to the structural um, data collection, be it with crystallography or in my case, cryo-electron microscopy or cryo -EM. However, this approach of doing a full biochemical purification would be really prohibitive for the plant respiratory complexes we, because we have just so little of them in the samples. Our samples are so limited. So rather than using this traditional approach, we decided to go with, a, with a, the non-traditional approach of using uh, using this partially purified mixed sample as our cryo-EM sample. So we took the fractions from the sucrose gradient and used them as this heterogeneous sample for a single cryo-EM data collection, after which we purified the complexes computationally using cryo-EM classification algorithms. So this in practice is what it looks like. So each of the cryo-EM micrographs contains particles highlighted here in yellow, but these particles are a mix, like I said, of all the, the respiratory complexes. So then we need to use the computational algorithms to separate the particles into the different subsets corresponding to the different um, complexes of interest, as you can see represented here. So using this strategy, we were able to, uh, to obtain high resolution structures 
for several respiratory complexes from one single grid. Um, so here, this, these videos show you the reconstructions and the models for a complex one assembly intermediate co called complex one star, as well as for the complex three dimer, as well as complex four and the super complex assembly between complex three and complex four. And now together, these first high resolution structures of the plant respiratory complexes allow us to start um, replacing the cartoon representations with the molecular details, shown as previously unknown features of plant respiration. So for example, our structures uh, revealed several um, subunit compositions that were unknown from previous biochemical and genetic and mass spec studies. For example, our structure of complex one showed us that complex one's um, carbonic anhydrase domain, which is present in plants, but it's not present in mammals or in yeast, is a heterotrimer. And by looking at the structure, we were able to determine the composition of this heterotrimer uh, and basically find out which three of five, out of five very, uh, very similar protein homologues are in fact the components of this domain. Similarly, our structure of complex four also showed us the number and identity of subunits in plant complex four. And again, by looking at the structure, we were able to determine that plant complex four has 10 subunits, and this is different from other organisms. And uh, looking at the structure, we were also able to determine that three subunits here on the right, which were previously thought to be plant specific because the, their sequences are highly divergent versus mammals and yeast, are in fact homologues of the subunits previously seen in, other in the other organisms. Additionally, the structures revealed several plant specific arrangements, for example, several new helices and beta sheets in complex three's catalytic matrix domain as well as a plant-specific interface between complex three and complex four in the super complex. So for example, if you compare the, the, the regions encircled here in the dashes, uh, you can see that there are very large differences between yeast and plants. And we hypothesize that these differences have functional implications for, plant for the plant super complex and complex three activity. Moreover, um, in addition to using our cryon particles to determine the static uh, structures of the complexes, we used a different cryom algorithm to examine the movement of the complexes, particularly focused on complex three, which uh, I will show the, uh, in a minute in these videos. So this analysis of the movement um, allowed us to generate new me mechanistic hypotheses on the functions of plant complex three that we can now experimentally test. So plant complex three is unique in that it not only has respiratory functions, but it also has non-respiratory functions. Um, and, and the question, there has been a question as to, we, uh, as to whether these two different functions are coupled, fu functionally coupled, functionally related. So what we saw uh, with our confirmation and analysis was that complex three has these complex wide um, dimer coordinated movements. And so we hypothesized that these movements form the physical basis for the, couple, for the coupling of complex three's respiratory and non-respiratory functions. Similarly, our analysis of the movement of uh, complex threes iron sulfur cluster domain shown here, uh, led us to hypothesize that the movement of this domain is coordinated across the dimers. And again, this would have functional implications, not only in plants, but in all other organisms as well. So in conclusion, these first high resolution structures of the plant respiratory complexes and super complexes, uh, firstly identified several new plant specific features um, furthering our knowledge of plant respiration. They also allowed us to generate new mechanistic hypotheses, which, which we can now experimentally test. And more broadly, they, uh, they, they laid the foundation for the development of more specific, more selective agricultural inhibitors to improve crop productivity. So in the future, um, I am really excited to carry on studying respiration across the tree of life beyond the handful of organisms in which we currently use to study respiration. I'm particularly interested in studying respiration in photosynthetic organisms, because I think that the interaction between photosynthesis and, and respiration will reveal new fundamental insights into both respiration and metabolism as a whole. Um, well, additionally, uh, photosynthetic organisms, in particular those in the oceans, uh, hold enormous potential as new sources of food and biomaterials. So in order to do this, um, my, my goal as an independent investigator will be to examine how the respiratory chain of photosynthetic organisms works at the molecular scale 
and across photosynthetic clades. So not just in land plants and in green algae, but really to survey the, the variety of biodiverse photosynthetic organisms. So to do this, I will use my expertise in plant bio, bioenergetics and membrane protein biochemistry and structural biology for my postdoc, as well as my expertise in cell molecular and chemical biology for my PhD uh, to not only uh, further our knowledge of the mechanism, the structure and function of respiratory complexes, but also to lay the foundation for the development of new respiration-based strategies that can improve crop productivity and biomaterial engineering. So with that, I would like to thank um, everyone in the LEDS lab uh, who has been involved in the project, particularly our group of undergraduate students who really drove the mitochondrial preps and plants, as well as our colleagues on campus, our funding sources, and thank you very much to the committee and the organizers and the mentors, and thank you for your attention.